Ed JD here. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and please check the like button so I get more likes than everyone else. If you want to contact me to do work, jdwatchservice at gmail.com and I'll consider it. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for subscribing. So what do we have here? This is part two to my watchmaking lathe dilemma. So I have in here um, the plates for a very old Waltham I believe it's a Waltham. It is a Waltham. It's a PW Bartlett pocket watch. Waltham PW Bartlett pocket watch. And uh, and what I'm doing is part two of what I was trying to do last time, which was save the wheel. It's like save the Save the Wheel Foundation. So and I got my piece of Rodico here. Did I stick something to this or not? I think it's an or not, folks. I think it's an or not. Yeah, so what I have here is a failure to communicate. Now, I've got a watch movement, but just part of it, right? Let me just get a screwdriver out here. So I have a watch movement, but I have... What I need to do here is measure the depth of the shaft I've got to create. So here is... There is a close-up of the wheel. It's the fourth wheel of a very beautiful pocket watch. And the fourth wheel is attached. Um, it's basically crimped onto the pinion. So the pinion is holding that wheel in place. And what I did was I snapped that pinion or the, this, the uh, staff off, the shaft off, um, and then I drilled a hole in there. And now what I'm going to do is make a shaft and pivot for this hole. I'm going to draw it really fast. I did this in a previous video, but I'm just for people have just run into this video. Here's the situation. I've got a I've got a shitty pen with zero ink. I've got a uh, <laughs> fourth wheel here. Then in the fourth wheel I've got a pinion like this. And then this is the pinion with all of its leaves as they say. Leaves. And then there's a little bit of a shaft sticking out here and there's a pivot on the end of that like that, right? So on this side here, there's nothing. There's a hole. And this hole, if I, if I were to look on the inside of this, this hole goes back probably about that deep, like this. And let me color the hole here. Fill it in. So that goes back about this deep. And it's obviously in the inside of the pinion. So if I'm looking at it from the top, I would have the pinion with its leaves, right? And that's the pinion, and of course it has the leaves going around like that. Pinion leaves. And there's a hole in the middle that I drilled in the last video. And I drilled it probably halfway into the pinion, because I didn't want to lose strength of the pinion. And then the wheel itself is, I'll make a very small version of the wheel, but there's its teeth, right? So it goes all the way around like that. And it's got, as you can see, five of these jobby doohickey arms. One, two, three four and five arms as you can see over here and what I need to do is take a piece of blued steel like this and I need to make that into the new shaft right this one is obviously too big to fit in there so I've got to grave this down to size and make that into the new shaft and then create the pivot on the end so the first step one step one is going to be measuring if this shaft comes out like that and then it pivots on the end like that, what I have to do is take a wire and do some measuring. Let me grab another piece, another credit card, or another business card, as they say. Who is they, anyway, when I say as they say? I'm full of crap, as I say. So <clears throat> I take a um, this here rod here, and this was plan A, and I mount that up in the chuck and I want to create this with it. So I want to pivot on the end. And then I want the shaft like this. I'm making it a little bit bigger than it sure would normally be. And the shaft would go into the pinion, which would end, we'll say, right here. I'm just going to draw the leaves of the pinion. So this is the shaft. These are the leaves of the pinion and like that, Let's end it right there, and then like that, 
And then of course, as I said earlier, you've got your the rest of the shaft coming out here. And that's the existing one and the and the pivot coming out here. So so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to create this beast, which means I've got to grave this so it fits in the hole, and then I've got to grave the pivot. But there's a plate, this upper plate that we're looking at right here, this upper plate. This is, in, fa in fact, the upper plate is the bottom of it because this is where the face goes through. So the new pivot is actually going to come out of this hole here. And I know that because that's the fourth wheel, which is directly down. Fourth wheel is, let me move this in this place here. Fourth wheel is directly down from where the crown is. It goes right there, right? That's the fourth wheel. So if I flip that around, that's the fourth wheel. So what I need to do is take this plate and put that gear in that, that I have already. And so it'll fit in. There's the back part of the plate here. And there's a jewel right here, right, that that goes through. And that's that plate there. And let me see if I can do that. I should give it some color, right? What do you think? That's that plate there. And that is the bottom one, which would be the what you're looking at here. So it's like that, right, the bottom plate. And I just need to sit it there without this in it, right? And then attach the top plate with its jewel. So there's a jewel here, right? That's the jewel. And attach that top plate like this. And then measure, and I got to understand the distance between right here, right? I'll just do a little line here. And right here with some with a little bit of... Uh, end shake it's called so I need this D equals distance right Oops, sorry about upside downness but that distance there is what I need um, for it to work but in order for me to understand how big this needs to be and I'll call this the sh S for shaft right this needs to be let's just do this right to the end of the pivot here and I need to understand uh, to, to figure out what this distance is. I need to put this in the watch and then screw the plate on, right? And then take a wire, just a simple wire, and push it through the jewel down to the bottom of that shaft and then measure where that wire is at the end and make a mark, right? And that mark is basically the, the I'm marking the piece of metal here so I can understand where it ends. So this would go through the jewel hole, a piece of wire would, and then I would mark it right there to, to determine how long that needs to be. And that's that would be the end of where my pivot is. Um, and I would still need to know how long this is, but I already have a... Uh, uh, well, I already have a, 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 a previous uh, pivot that should help me there. So, so, But I do need to know how long the whole... The holistically, how long the whole thing is. So when I shave this back, I can shave it back right to where the base would hit the jewel right here so that's the trick that's the job um so i'm gonna first uh unscrew this plate here and and start the work so i just happen to have a whole boatload of wire that i bought a while back that i could likely use to support this exercise so i'm going to get a make it a big piece of wire and just cut that off like that there's my piece of wire I'm going to shove in there and I'm going to try this out. So first thing I'm going to do is unscrew the plate here and I just need to make sure that the, the existing pivot goes in there. So, so I just unscrew the plate and I hope my friend in BC is watching all this stuff. It's a Saturday today. Right, there's the screw one and screw two. And now I know that the fourth wheel is this one right here, right? So I'm going to turn that around. Oh yeah, I sure screw that up, eh? And it's, it's already marked, which is great. So I think he already marked it, a little X there. X marks the spot, but what he didn't do is mark it on the other side. So I want to make sure that's also marked on the other side. So I don't have a problem. So I'll get a little bit of a, a marker here and just put a, a dot on it. So... Again, making sure it's the right one. There it is there. And flip that around to the other side. And there it is there. So it's got to be that one there, right? So let me turn that around. Yeah, X and X. So I'll make it a little bit bigger. It's not going to make a difference. 
So that is the jewel right there, folks. The jewel. Oh yeah, in a world. So, so now I've got this little tiny, the world's smallest piece of wire, right? I'm gonna lower my seat. Oh jeez. And I'm gonna see if that fits in the hole, because if it doesn't fit in the hole, none of this works, right? So I'm gonna do some hole testing here. So let's take that and then fit that through the jewel hole. And oh my goodness, it went right through. No problem at all. So that fits in the jewel hole. So now, what I want to do is make sure the wheel is sitting in this position here because it's the pivot side I'm doing is over here. So I just want to line this up again this way. Uh, where's the barrel? The barrel is here. So I'm assuming that the barrel is over the barrel. Is it? Is the barrel over the barrel or is the barrel over another barrel? Uh, he should have probably given me the whole darn watch, you know. The barrel is over the barrel. Let me see. So none of that is the winding mechanisms. So none of that is this stuff here. None of that is this stuff here. So it's got to be lined up with this stuff here. Yeah, I think that's lined up this way. Hello. Something's fishy. Something fishy's going on. Fishy swaths. I need to take out my deep magnifying glass because it doesn't seem to work when I'm doing this stuff. I thought it was like that. Is that right? Maybe it isn't. Let me go back down this way a little. This is where the barrel is, so this doesn't make any sense at all. Let me look at the screw holes here. Let me look at this. Oh my god. Can't be here. Right? It could be here, but it's not. It might be here. But it's also not. <laughs> uh, there's a knobby here. And that's where it is. So there we go. That's what it looks like is one piece. See, if you don't have the rest of the watch, this is not easy. So if I do this and just turn it around, I need to make sure it fits on like that. So, so let me just pull this out. i got to put the wheel in right there. So I'm going to take this here up and move it straight over. Now I'm going to take this existing wheel here. And the wheel is going right one two three it's going right here so i'm going to get in really close so i can make sure this wheel is going into the right hole here okay right jewel hole there we go i was wondering how long i could hold my breath for all right, so that's in the right hole. Get this out of the way. As I said in all my videos, you got to get your crap out of the way, or else you're going to screw things up. There's the wire, right? So what I want to do is put this back in position. Just moving this around a bit so I can put this in position. Oh, there's one side. Come on, get in there. I had this figured out a few minutes ago, didn't I? Oh, there we go. So that's in there now. Um, I probably don't need to put the screws in to do this, but I want to be able to look at it from the side. So this is the hole it needs to go in. So I'll make an assumption that if this goes straight down, it's going to hit the hole of that of the wheel. So I'm going to go straight down like this, like that, and now i got to lift it all up and have a look from the side. Oh shit, just moved out of the way. Whoever decided to make, to allow me to do it this way, 
I will get you back. Because i got to make sure that that wheel is still sitting in the position, right? So I'll lift it up like that. And then look inside that hole. It looks like it's in there. Let me see. If it's in there, I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, the wire is in the hole. I think it's as deep as it's going to get. Now that should be the distance of the wire. Oh, great. It actually fell out because it touched the top of it. So now i got to get it back in that hole again. Alright, it's in the hole. Now I'll just show it to you from an angle from this camera side. So can you see that? There it is. Is that focusing at all? There, it's focused now. Uh, there it is. Now you can see that wire sticking into the wheel. There's the wheel and there's the wire. Try to get that. There's a good angle there. So that's sticking into the, the gear. So now I'm just going to put this straight down because that's in the gear. And I want to be able to mark that wire. Right, so what do I do to mark the wire? If I just pinch it, if I cut it, it might mark it perfectly, right? So if I hold it on the bottom, hold it down, and then cut it. That's going to be my plan this time. All right, it didn't cut, but I bent it, so that's fine. I got an extreme bend on that, so there's the uh, wire right now. And come on, zoom in for me. There's the wire with the extreme bend on it, and it's the bottom part of that wire. So now I'll just cut that wire where it is, and I'm going to refit it into the hole. So hold the wire, maybe poke it into some Rotico. There we go. So that's the wire there. Now when I put that into the hole, is there enough pivot sticking out so that it's, uh, you know, I cut it a little low, so I'm going to cut it again here. It's actually hard to see exactly where you're cutting it. There we go. That's better. Now there's the world's smallest jobby doohickey piece I'm going to stick in my arm. So there's the wire. Now I'm going to put it into the hole because I want to see how far down it goes. There, I'm making an assumption it's in the hole right now. Uh, let me look at it up close. Yeah, there's not that much sticking out. That would likely be a perfect size. So I just have to make sure that is in fact in the hole, as I did before. So I'm going to grab the, the two plates like that and hold it up and have a look on the side to make sure that is in fact in the hole. And as I look at it right now, I just rattle it around with my finger a bit. Yeah, that's sticking in the hole. It's funny, it just sticks to my finger, eh? So I'm just gonna take it out right now because I think we're good. So that's sticking in the hole. There's the wire and there's the gear. And let me just push, get this out of the out of the way here. There we go. Put that gear back where it belongs. I'm going to put that back into its home. So there's two pieces of wire here. There's this one here. I'll just get this out of the way again. I've got containers over here for small things. 
things that I want to just get rid of. So I'll just put this in with the watch hands. <laughs> what the heck? Hit, 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 hit your stuff. So that's it. So that's the wire. So I've followed someone else's advice, which is really good. I think that's good advice, actually. Now, if I look at the previous job I did, and I get that, grab that. All right, there it is there. That's the previous job I did. Now, that fit absolutely perfect um, into the hole. And again, I don't, it's hard to measure how deep that hole is, but that fit into the hole. But the problem I had was the pivot was too short, right? So what I need to do now is I need to, to grave this piece of wire away. And I want to, I want to basically, um, figure out deep to grave this thing to get it in. Now I don't have to be too specific because I, I can take more than I need as long as it's down into the hole fairly deep. And then I need to know exactly where this this uh, pivot needs to start, right? So if I do it too short, um, I can't survive. So I got to make sure it's not too short. Uh, so I'll do that and that'll be my uh, job in a lathe. So. I'm also going to do this. I'm going to grab that piece of wire here with some Rotico so I can use that to size this here. So I'm just going to press down here with the Rotico and that, grab that piece of wire. So I've got that piece of wire stuck to a piece of Rotico like that. So that's going to be used a little later for measuring. I'll just move that out of the way. And then I need another piece of Rotico because I'm going to use this piece of Rotico and this pivot to to measure where I think that uh, the actual pivot needs to start and I don't want to lose this piece because I I need it as a witness piece so so I'm just gonna press down on that like this and that's my piece of stuff that I need later on see so get that squish that in a bit so I don't lose it there we go. So now it's that piece there, as you can see, and I'm going to use that to measure when I'm working on the lathe. And and then I just have this piece of wire here, and I need to figure out what collet size I need for this wire. I'm thinking it's a five. Let me just grab my collets here. Get a little bit of a play-by-play. -play. My video is going to be pretty long, but you know what you can do? You can just stop it at any time. So there's some collets here and I think I'm a six or a seven with this piece of wire. There's a seven. Look at that. That's perfect. So the seven fits perfectly. So it's a collet size of seven. I'm missing a collet. It's probably in a lathe. These two collets are in one of my lathes just sitting there minding your own business. So there's my my collet. Now let me go grab my lathe. I just knocked over a big huge weight. So <coughs> Put that back into place. Um, and I'm going to go grab my lathe and get into place here. While you're waiting for me to grab my lathe, you can watch this very beautiful map and, and web clock, carriage clock, ticking away like a genius. All right, I've got my lathe here. Um, I've got a tailstock here that's a call it holding tailstock, which is really nice, but I don't need it for this job. Get that out of the way. Um, I've got the lathe. I'm just going to see if that's actually going to spin for me, and it is. So these are little oiler caps. So you want to make sure that there's enough oil in the lathe that you don't run out. So every now and then you got to take your oiler and you got to fill this thing up just a bit because this will. This is um, absolutely necessary so you don't burn the lathe out because it's a cone bearing on a lathe and the cone bearing needs oil so there's enough oil in that one fill that up and just put the cap back on and just fill that one up here this is the rear bearing here and again these have been oiled before and I have the uh, I'll adjust the second camera in a second here because I can see right now that you can't see anything with it so it's kind of useless so that'll work its way down. That's the second oil oil stop here. So I'll push that in. So that's good there. 
and then just move this camera over here so you can see a bit more of the work uh, let me see how well how do i want to set this camera up maybe i'll set it up on the other side so it makes sense how does that sound all right i got two angles here one kind of from the top over there in the corner and then one right at the uh, part itself so let's put the collet in here i'll get my measuring tool out after but i'm going to put this piece of blued steel in place here looking at both sides i think i like this side better so i'm taking this pushing this in through the back this is a size 18 in here which was the one I had used for uh, grabbing on to the uh, to the back end of that uh, pinion. So I was grabbing onto the pinion with that. So let me just turn that around until it finds the slot and tighten that up a bit. Now, how much do I want? That's the question. So right now I'm cutting the back end of it, right, which is the wheel will fit on like this. So I can really put it in fairly tight here so I don't get uh, that much of a warble on it and and I'll just part this off and then I'll start working it and fitting the back end so I'm just going to see if that if my graver is good enough you just move that in a bit more so you got to make sure you set this up perfect so where it cuts the uh, cuts into the metal it's um, not going to chatter so <clears throat> to cut that off, I'm going to use one of my bigger gravers to start off with. And you saw me sharpen both of them, so they should have pretty good cutting property right now. But we'll see, okay? See how well they cut. So I put that into my graver handle here. And grab in the graver like that. And I could probably just use my current uh, glasses to start off with. And I've got a times five loop on there. Um, I, already, I still had uh, these protective glasses on from before so so I just uh, want to get in here and see if that works with this whether I can get a good cut on that. So that's too too low right now as I go here it's just I want to be here and I want the graver to be halfway so so I can just loosen that and then raise it up just a bit and then test that uh, a little, just a tad more, I think, which is good. Just a tad more, I think that. And you want your um, your tool rest, preferably, is parallel to the part. So that's pretty good there. And if your tool rests, I'm going to tighten it. Make sure that's nice and tight. That's nice and tight. You want to make sure your tool rest is parallel. That way, when you make your cut. You can. Uh, you don't have to be concerned if uh, if it's not. So the other thing I could do too, uh, very quickly, is take the previous part here, like this, and I could measure its thickness. So I'll get my Duzium tool. I used to call it the Duzamine tool, but it's the Duzium tool. It means 12 units of 12. So there's the tool there. This is. You can't live without one of these, by the way. If you're making uh, balance staffs, you need one of these because you're going to measure this like that. You put your finger on the bottom and you look over uh, on this side of, the, of that, right? And you can't see that in either camera, can you? But it looks like it's about eight right now. So I'm looking over here as I squeeze on there, and this is measuring around eight on there. So, so I do I do that and I measure that and say that's eight. Right, and that's eight millimeters, right? And then I can take the old part here that I already have on a piece of erotico, and I can squeeze this in and see what that was. How did it fit into that tool? So just very carefully grab that. I think I need to hold it sideways. What I don't want this to do is take off on me. So I just make sure that's smushed in there for now. I'm not really worried about the uh, length yet. So I'll smush that in like that. And then try to grab that. That is a six. That is a six. 
So this piece of uh, metal, you don't have to take this down much because it's measuring an 8 right now. It's got to go down to around a 6. So I can start I can start graving. Um, where did I put my graver? Anybody see it? Anybody see it? There it is. All right. You got to have a tip over tool rest too, by the way. So, so let me see if I can flatten the end off this thing to start off with. I should turn the grave around, but I'm not going to. All right. That's in perfect condition. So now I'm going to just take this down. That's cutting exceptionally, by the way. So that'll go down to an 8, or a 6 rather, really fast because the gravers are cutting really well right now. So let me just get that in there and have a look at what I got. I'm at a 7, so it's six and a half, seven. 7. Um, like I said, if I screw this up, I can go back and fix it without a problem. So. That's going to be really nice for making that pivot, by the way, because I don't think my gravers were that sharp last time I did this. They're really nice now. So that's showing at a 7 and a yeah, 7. So i got to bring that down one more. It was an 8, so it took a bit of material off already. So here we go. And I want, I don't want this to have much of an angle on it, but I may have to switch glasses to get in super close because what I'll do is I'll look through the background and I'll just make sure there's no, there's no taper on it. Because if you have a taper on it, then, uh, and you fit it in and it fits in tight in the front and then loose in the back, that taper is not going to, not going to work really well. So you don't want a taper on it. So now I can actually, I'm getting so close to the part right now. That's pretty good there and again look at the uh, use my tool to measure it again because I want to get close and then start fitting it that is a still seven and let me look at the end here and the end says it's still a seven just below a seven so it's getting close the old one was a six so I don't want to uh, I don't waste my time fitting it until I get close Oh, it's getting better. Um, I might start to get the part out right now. What am I looking at here? I'm looking at just under a 7. And the tip of it's getting closer to a 6 right now. So let me get the part out. And this is where you, you got to be very careful when you're fitting this part. That you don't uh, push. Don't push it. Don't push it on because you'll end up popping the wheel off of the uh, off of its position. Yeah, so that's not fitting yet. So that's like I said, I got to get this down to a six before it's going to start to fit. So let's get some more, rid of some more stuff here.
one's pretty close there I think but but I don't want it tapered so it's going to be the perfect fit without too much taper so what do I got here that's showing that it's a six so let me grab the wheel again and see what that looks like nope starting to go in So the tip is going in, which means I don't want to take any more off that tip because the drill, the drilling would have been flat. So I want to, it's got a bit of a taper on it. So I want to take that taper off. All right, see what this looks like. Grab the wheel again. See how far this goes in if it does. So it's going in now, but not very far. Sort of at the mouth of the, uh, the hole. It's at the mouth, so I'm going to take some more off the tip actually. Tip, tip, tip. Alright, let's see what this looks like. I got a bit of a taper in here and I'm worried about too much taper. Alright, that went all the way in that time, so I may have taken too much off. I'm not sure. No, it's not too bad. Because I'm going to be gluing this in anyway, right? So. And I just need it to fit nicely and snugly. I don't want it to be, I want it to be bottomed out. Um, so I want it to work that way. So this might be perfect, actually. So let me just twist this a bit to see if it's going to snug up a bit. Yeah, it's snugging up a bit, so it's going in enough. And then there's a little tiny bit of a taper to grab it at the end. Let me look at that. Yeah, I think that will do because I can tap that on after, right? So, so there we go. So I'm assuming that's going to bottom out, right? Bottom out. So now I need to measure where the, um, I need to pull this out and I need to measure where I think that the pivot end will be, right? So, so if I look at this, this is my wire that I had here. Let me put this in and close and have a look at it. Okay. So that's the wire. So the end of the wire. So I'm assuming that that's kind of where that would be. And I'd need to cut it right at the end. Right. So let me, um, let me do this. I'm going to mark it. It's an old technique in watchmaking. So I'm going to just basically take this wire and I'm going to put it in, stick it to the uh, tip over tool rest so I can get that wire close to where it's going to be. I don't want to drop the wire either. That would piss me off because I want to be able to measure that. It's the same way you measure a uh, a balance staff. I don't want to have to remeasure this wire, so let me just get that in there really good. I don't really need it to, uh, to show itself, so I can just flip it right over the, uh, the radico. Get the radico right over the wire. 
there we go now I know that wire is not going to go anywhere so I can stretch it out long and then bend it and then hopefully I can stick it on the tool rest here and then line it up with the uh, the part because all I want to do is use it to measure where that part is going to go I may have to do this with one hand all right so now I'm going to get this uh, my graver and I want to measure the end of that wire so, so I know exactly how long the uh, part needs to be and I think it's going to be right on the friggin edge so Yeah, that's perfect. So what I did was I made a little tiny line, right? My line is right there, right? Right there. So so now I want to part this piece, right? So I got to pull it out a bit more. Like this. And I'm going to just work on that to part it, right? I'd rather part it with this tool than my other ones, so if I can grave it down, I'd probably pull it out even more, right, to part it. Like that. There we go. Let's see if I can do this. Now, some people use a saw blade to part it. I find that just cutting it like this is usually good enough. Um, you know what I'm going to do, though, first before I do that? I'm going to put one of my very fine tipped gravers in um, and I'm going to cut a little bit of a trench in there and I'm going to use my four flat to do that and I'm going to cut a little bit of a trench. Now when I hold these gravers to the actual piece of metal I always um, I always hold it at just a little tiny bit of an angle that way uh, it's not going to get stuck under the metal right so there's my graver there, and I don't know whether I have to lower the tip over tool rest to do this or not. Yeah, I think I gotta lower it to do this. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. There, I got my groove there. But Mama's got his groove. Now I could snip that off, but no, I need to bring it in just a bit more. Let me check my graver here and see how much room I have. So I got that much room. So if I push it in around there, that's probably enough room to to part it properly, right? The deer departed. All right stop and start this video again. No, you couldn't even tell I stopped and started it because it didn't move at all. So I'm going to use this nice sharp graver and the heel of it in here to There, I'm going to get the other graver out and I'm lowering the tool rest because I want to use my uh, four, four flat to see if I can part it perfectly, right? There we go, that's not too bad.
Right, that's something I could probably just break off now. I'll take a little more material off it. There we go. Now, is that going to just break off? There we go. So I just grabbed it and broke it off, which is nice. So there's the piece right there, like that. Um, so that's done. That'll fit into that wheel. And then the next thing I need to do, let me take this out. And I'm going to move this over to the side. Um, the next thing I need to do now with this piece here is figure out where the pivot would start. So that's another job. Let me grab my other glasses here and using these again with the airy loop. This airy loop is amazing. This, uh, it snugs onto the glass and it flips right over. And I believe these are a times five. I'd have to have a look, but I've got times three in the bottom and the bottom, and then this is a times five. So I'm not sure how much it gives me, but it gives me times a lot. So. So well, that's that part there. So I want to turn that around now and call it that up. And But I do have to figure out first where the pivot would start, right? So what I did is I have this other piece, right? Let me see if I can find the other piece. And this is it here. And this piece did go in, right? And I did make a pivot for it. And the pivot started way back there. I'm not sure if that's accurate anymore. Depends how far down I think that went. But that's my best guess right now. So so what I'm going to do is is call it this up. Um, I may have to measure it backwards. Right? So that's kind of what you got to do here. So I'm going to turn it around this way again. And push that into the uh, call it. First I'm going to drop it and not, never find it again. There it is there. That's the uh, other thing, is that you drop parts and you're screwed. So so there it is. I got it in my thingies. And I'm going to push it in and measure backwards. So, because I remember that's what you do when you got yourself a balance staff. So there it is. And I'm just going to snug that up here. And now I take this other part that I have here. Now I should actually snug that thing up again just like I did the other one because I I don't want to lose it. So let me just take go off camera for a second and do that. There I've taken the rotico and I've wrapped it around the part. Where is that? There it is. That way I don't have to worry about it just popping off the part. So now, same as before, I've got my uh, my part here and I really just want to measure where I cut this thing off, where the pivot starts. And I'm just eyeballing it right now, and I can see that I can kind of see where the pivot starts by eyeballing it. I could have pulled this part out a little further because it's not it's not out enough for me to do a good measurement. So I'm going to pull it out just a bit more like that, tighten that up, and then I'm going to use one hand. I'm not sure if I can. Do use my graver with one hand to do this, but I want to just make a line, right? So I might just be able to touch it to make a line. I'm not sure. So so that's that's the part there, and I pulled it out a bit. The pivot starts right here. Yeah, I wasn't expecting my part to wrap around the other part with the Rodico. <laughs> but it did. So I gotta pull this off and not lose it. Alright, get that Rodico off that part. Get the Rodico off the part. Oh yeah. This is fun, baby. This is fun. It's called micro work. Now I'm gonna move this 
piece out again just a bit more because it's still not out enough for me to grab it and make and mark it properly. All right, there we go. Now it's out good. I write some good. And now I can use my this here on one side and see if I can get in close enough here with this part to eyeball where this where that should where the pivot should start. It should start right about there. Yep, that's it. So what I did was I just scored a line on the part. It's the world's smallest line. So I'll score it again. Get it really close to the part. And I don't want to score beyond that line, so... There we go. Now I went to the, the other side of that line. And it's measured five times and cut once. So I'm going to go back here again with that part. And look at where that pivot starts. And, and I got it starting right at the right place. So what I want to make sure then is that I leave myself some end shake. So I'm going to actually cut the pivot a little further out to leave myself some end shake. The good news is, as I fart around with this, um, I can redo it if I screw it up. So, and I'm not putting any stress on that wheel at all. So it's, the wheel is in very, it's very comfortable right now. There's no stress on the wheel. So I'm just chucking this up right now. And I just need enough sticking out to grab it. So that's kind of, it's just a little tiny bit sticking out. And then when I grade this, I'm going to start, I'm not going to start um, right where that line is. Because I, I got to assume that I need some, something to play with. So I'm going to start shaving this whole thing down to a, uh, to the right size pivot. First thing I'm going to do is adjust my tip over tool rest here because this absolutely needs to go up higher um, as I make this part. That's too high. Lower it a bit. This could be a two day job. Too low. Up a little bit. Up just a little tiny bit more, not much, but a little more. And I'm going to try to make sure it's relatively parallel, bacon parallel. And then I'm going to uh, start shaving away material. I'm going to just keep working at this until I get it to the size where I have to start using my stone. And again, I'm, the pivot, I'm not sure how long that pivot needs to be, but I want to make sure it's not, I'm not shorting myself, as they say, right? That's where the wheel is going to go, and that's, the pivot needs to be the right size. It's probably too big there, but it's going to be hard to shave down to the right size when it's so thin, right? Because I can't put pressure on it, I'll have to use a stone. So that's it for now, and I'm going to Keep shaving at this and be back in a few seconds. Now, as you can see, this pivot is getting smaller and smaller. So I think I'm going to have to start working it with a stone because I'm worried about my graver getting underneath the pivot and then snapping it up. So it takes a little while to get it working with the stone properly. So I'm going to do that and um, get the uh, 
complete the video. I'll show you how it's done. So I've got two stones. I know this is an Arkansas stone, but I'm not sure the name of this one here. And I can't remember which one takes material off faster. I know this one works quite well to, to do a fine job near the end. Um, I also have uh, a pivot file uh, that I have this one here, and that's that's actually a file on this side. And then on the other side, it is for burnishing the pivot at the end. So I don't think the uh, I don't think this pivot file will take material off the stone really fast, even though it's a pretty good file. Uh, I've got my doubts on how fast this will remove material. So and when you're holding it, you grab with your fingers like this, right? So it's lightly touching here. And the weight of the back end is pushing on the, on the uh, pivot itself as it's spinning. So you have very little weight on it. That way you can work it and get it down to the right size. So, so that's, that's how you do that. So um, I may start with the, uh, with the stone or I may just see if I can do get a little bit more material off it with my uh, my two two flat graver this one here so I'll, I'll try this one um, and just see whether whether that'll work my four my four didn't seem to want to cut enough so I'm just I was a little concerned with using my four too much and causing it to chatter and then breaking the pivot off so but I think maybe my two will, will work so let's just get out the the two flat here and stick it into the graver handle and um, it's a 407 right now and I'm not tired yet although you don't want to keep doing this if you start getting tired because you will screw it up now let me see how close this graver gets in here so I want to just make sure it's the right height all right that's not the right height because it's over the top so I'll lower that just a bit. You want it to be perfect, perfect, so you don't have to put much weight on it at all. You see, is that good? That might be right here. Let's see if I can remove material from this. Yeah, it's coming off. All right, that's enough of that. I know for a fact if you get the graver underneath, it just snaps it right off. So you want to be able to use your stone here. Um, it's good to put just a, da a dab of oil on the stone. Um, I tried using cutting oil last time. It didn't seem to make much difference because the stone is a stone, right? So just put a little bit of oil on the stone like that. And then you rub the stone a bit like this. Rub it in like that. and. Right now I'm trying to cut it flat, so I'm not too worried about, like if it was a pivot, I wouldn't do that. So I'm holding the stone like this in my hands, as you can see, and super lightly, right? And I'm just gonna work that, work that pivot. It takes a long time to get the pivot down to the right size. It's not an easy job. You just keep working it and working it and working it, and eventually it becomes a small little tiny pivot. Uh, and then you've got to make sure you don't screw up by cracking it and uh, or breaking it when you take it out of the collet or some stupid thing like that so but again the good news is if i screw it up i can start all over again and keep doing it until i get it right and this is this takes a lot of concentration because you want to make sure that you're uh, moving it nice and easy and not pushing up too hard you're just using kind of the weight of the stone to move it. And so I'm just kind of peeling away at the end here. Um, this is going to be, end up being the biggest piece of, the longest pivot I've ever made. It's going to be record size pivot. The plan here is when I return it that the owner is going to be able to nip that off 
and that'll be the, that'll be it. And I'm working on the end part right now because I need to make sure that um, it's flat. And I just used my graver, which took some of the flat away from it. It turned it into a bit of a a uh, very roughed looking pivot. So, and that's not what I want. I want it to be nice and flat. So. And I need this pivot to go all the way through the jewel, so right close to the shaft there, that pivot needs to be the right size. I know the material's coming off here because I can see it. I'm not I just don't you don't have to go too fast with the uh, the lathe. I'm gonna speed it up a bit and see if that works more. Yeah, I took a lot of material off the back end of this. That's why it's sort of not flattening out. All right, I'm going to keep working on this. I'll turn my camera off and then I'll come back when it's looking more like a pivot, okay? Again, the technique. A little bit of oil on there and then just back and forth like this. This is exactly how you make a balanced staff pivot too. It's a lot of work. You could get the cross slides out and try to cut it even finer. You have a bit more control over the cutting with cross slides, but at the end of the day you're going to have to get the stone out anyway, so. Right now I'm kind of romancing the stone. Ah, a little joke, a little joke. I'll turn off my camera again, that's enough. Keep working on it. <clears throat> As you can see, the pivot is almost the right size. It's super small right now. And I'm using cutting oil with the uh, stone to work on it. So I've still got a little ways to go. And it's been over an hour of working on this pivot, so. It is not an easy job to repivot something. Alright, this is how small this pivot is right now. As you can see, and I'm working it with a stone here. I hit the camera there. I'm working it like this underneath it with a stone. Like that, to get it down to size. Not an easy job. All right, that's about it for the day. If I do any more, I could crack that off. So I'm just going to leave it at that. The jewel's going about, uh, probably about two-fifths the way up that shaft. So I've just got to take it nice and easy. I'm going to start again in the morning when I'm a little more rested because I've been at this for a couple of hours now. All right, I have the pivot to the right size now. And now I'm going to get out my burnisher um, just to make sure that the uh, pivot is smooth. And this is how you do it. Just like that. And that pivot is now smooth. Now, the only other thing is that <clears throat> I'm just making sure that that rides nicely on the jewel. So, I'm going to take this out now. I believe it'll, the plate will go all the way in now, but I'm just very nervous about pushing it all the way in and then pulling it out again. Only because I don't want to twist it and crack the, uh, the jewel at all, or the uh, pivot at all. And that looks like it goes all the way in, like that. I'm just going to do a little tiny bit right at the base. 
um, as I saw that it got a little bit jammed just at the base I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of material away at the base right here right there That should be good, and I'm going to take my stone here and do a little bit at the base again with this stone here. done and then get my burnisher out again and just very likely burnish the uh, pivot again it's hard to do with the camera there so There we go. Now, that's done. Done and dusted. Now I have to flip that around and put that in the collet and then push on the fourth wheel. Alright, there's the part. I'm just trying to focus that in. There's the part right there. And now i got to put the fourth wheel, put that on the fourth wheel and then fit it in. So that's the next step in this adventure. I already decided to record this even though I dropped this a few seconds ago. I do not want to lose it. Now I think that's in there. I'm going to push it in a little bit more. And now I'm going to just tighten that call it up. There we go. And that's squeezing the part now. And then um, I do need to make sure this part is clean. I think the base is fine because I. Uh, didn't oil any of that stuff there, but I'm just going to do that. And then the wheel needs to go on. And there was some debate about what kind of, um, kind of stuff I put on there. Like blue is threadlock blue, medium strength. I think that's what I'm going to use. I think red is removable. I think that's red. 424. So someone told me to use 242, which is removable Loctite. So maybe I'll just use that instead of the blue, which is medium. Although before I was able to pull that off, pull that out, no problem. So, you know, I think I'll use medium strength. Medium, not, not permanent. Medium still means I can twist it off if I have a problem. And hopefully start all over again, right? It's the last thing I want to do, folks. The last thing I want to do. So, so I am going to, you see, grab that wheel. Have a look at that wheel here. There's the hole. And I believe I tapped it in last time with a... Uh, with a um, stake. So let me just put a little bit of Loctite on that. It 
That's enough. And grab the wheel. I think I'm more shaky this morning than I normally am. I'm just putting that wheel in place. I use my fingers here to make sure it's in there. There we go. It's not too bad. It always feels like it's at an angle. I don't know what it is. I think it's my my glasses. Now I'm going to get my punch out and I want to tap that just a bit. I think I used, if I recall, I used the punch of all punches. I think I used this one here which was super small and put it right over the edge here. So I want to do this again very carefully. just like that now again not sure if all this is going to work but who knows now i'll take the part out again very carefully and there it is i'm just going to put this aside right now and put everything away right and then i'm going to show you the part so let's just do that all right just showing a different angle here so here's the equipment i needed to use this is a valarobi same as those gravers valarobi um, and this is a uh, pivot file so i got myself a pivot file here so on one side this is used to file pivots and on the other side it is for burnishing the pivot and see if I can close up there we go for burnishing the pivot and see those horizontal lines that helps to burnish the uh, the metal theoretically it hardens the metal as well as it's doing it so I've got that I use the seats gauge I think I have one jewel missing from this gauge do I have a jewel missing no this jewel this gauge is complete no jewels are missing so that's a seats gauge I've got two of these gauges and in this case here, I wanted to get it down to 24, but I didn't bother using the gauge because, in fact, I think it was running around 25, not 24. So, so there's the gauge there. Uh, why are all the numbers backwards? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the camera. So that's the seats gauge. So that's very useful when you're making balance staffs, for example. So let's get that out of the way. I have these graver handles that I use to grab the gravers. So I'll put that over here. Then I had all of the set of gravers that I showed you. Um, the Valrobe gravers, Valrobe, Valrobe. These ones here are very precise work. I didn't use these much this time, just a bit. And then these were normal carbide gravers here that I showed you how to sharpen those before. So that was that. Then I have two stones. Let me pull this out. So. I know this is an Arkansas stone here. I can't remember what type stone this is, but I think this cuts material off more uh, qu like quicker. And it's also the 90 degree angle is a bit better on that than it is on this. So I use that to take material off as well, uh, which is fun, a couple hours worth of that. And then I used, I had the uh, this here as my my gauge for the length of the of the whole unit. I stuck through the jewel and went straight down, which determined what pivot size I needed. And then I had this, which was the previous one that fit nice, nicely. Um, this is the previous one I made, and I used that to determine exactly where I needed to start the pivot, and hopefully that was accurate. Um, we'll see. 
And then I still have a spring collet over here. I use a lathe with my spring collets of various size. I had some a set of tweezers, um, and I had the the main plate or the plate that was used, and I clearly marked the jewel hole that had to go through. So that's where this is going to rest, um, and I'm going to wait till that that Loctite dries before I install this and then just spin it around to make sure it works. Should work, shouldn't be an issue here, but I'm going to wait till that Loctite dries because I don't want uh, the forces to be wrong on that. And then of course I had a stake that I used with a very fine tip. Hold that here so the camera will, there we go. That's the end here and I wanted to make sure that that stake was kind of hitting the shaft, not the other pivot. Um, and allowing me to tap that in a bit better. Um, again, a little bit of hope going on that, that there is no taper in that and it's going to stay in place. Um, of course, once it's between the plates here, it should stay in place without, without an issue. Um, and then what else did I have? I have a set of watchmakers glasses. And again, these are, I used, these are times three on the bottom for, for close-ups. There's a hair on there. <laughs> And that's 1.5 on the top for what, looking at my computer. And then this is a, I think this is a times five. I'll have to look at this to make sure it's a times five. It says it somewhere, but I think this is a times five loop. And so I put the times five loop over the three and it gives me nice close up. So, and this is an airy loop. So let me switch cameras here and have a look at this part. All right, there's the part. And I kept the other camera on as well. And I'm just going to grab that part very carefully and just rotate it for you so you can see what that looks like. There's the part there. It's ready to rock and roll. That should sit in place. And then uh, there's a, of course, I graved it up higher than I needed to because I did that intentionally. Um, and let's just see if that works. If that doesn't work, I've got to start all over again, which I am not looking forward to if that happens. But I'll fit this part later on. I may do it tomorrow. And to make sure that uh, that Loctite really works, like it's in there nice and tight. So I use the Loctite uh, medium for this. I didn't use the 242, as was recommended by somebody, because I tried the medium before, and that worked perfectly. So there's there's that part, and I'm just going to give you an idea of how small that is. There's my finger, and that is one small part. There's my fingernail. So that was. A lot of work. So to the gentleman out there who said, hey, can you do this? Normally he would, for the amount of work that I did, I could make probably two grand. Um, but obviously I can't charge him this, so I'm looking at this as a learning experience. Because uh, if I don't, I'll commit suicide. <laughs> so there you go. Somebody said to me the other day that how do you become a millionaire doing watch repair? You start off as a billionaire. There's the answer. So. So thanks for watching this video. I'm going to produce this right now, but you're not going to know that, <laughs> obviously. Um, and then I'm going to go watch the Masters this afternoon. So have fun. Um, have fun watchmaking. If you have any questions for me, uh, just ask. I think this is was successful. But again, I've got to uh, make sure that uh, it works when it's installed. And I'll spin that around and use a puffer to make sure that it spins nicely. So thanks for watching my channel. And... Um, and uh, stay safe and if you want me to do any work for you that's not this long <laughs> get hold of me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com jdwatchservice at gmail.com and i do provide uh, cleaning services and repairs for vintage pocket watches so thanks again for watching my channel please like please subscribe and pass it along because i spent a lot of time uh, recording these videos and helping uh, fellow watchmakers out there. Thanks a lot and catch you next time.